Guys, fine with ProBox, respect TKO. There was a little bit of editing there. Uh, thanks, Pete Stoughton. Pete Stoughton, left to right. Uh, promoter, fighter, trainer. Ron Wood, same for you. And Matt Sims down at UKBC, down in uh, Unique Gym, down in Chatham. Guys, how you doing? Good. Yeah? Excellent. Miserable weather today, but never mind. We're uh, sure we have a quality interview. Pete, you're looking a bit glum, what's up? Are you? All right, cool. Just making sure, mate. Yeah? All right. Pete, listen, we start with you, because you're on the left-hand side. Uh, just, um, just for the viewers, introduce yourself and uh, what's coming up next for you. Uh, I'm Pete, everyone knows that and just told them that. <laughs> um, boxing on Friday in Liverpool um, against Lee Johnson, who is undefeated. Um, he's a big name up there. Yep. I'll be going up, yeah, I'll be travelling up there on Friday, boxing on the main event now, uh, see how it goes. Um, am I looking forward to it? Not really. <laughs> but um, I'm happy to go up there, I'm confident. Um, nothing else I can say, really. Well, he's an undefeated guy, isn't he? And you're going to the Lions Den, mate, so, yeah. you know, hats off for doing that as well. How much do you know about him, Pete? Um, I was meant to fight him last year. Um, big, big, tall fellows, knocked out quite a few people. Yeah. Um, it didn't happen because he had a rib, rib injury. Um, and then I got a phone call three weeks before asking if I wanted to fight him. Uh, offered me good money. I don't really need the money to be honest with you. Um, but I've been training very hard with this man, Ron Wood. Yeah. Um, also been sparring a hell of a lot with a guy called Carl Kingslow uh, since January. Yeah. Hard sparring, like fights. Um, yeah. And you don't you don't just box Pete, do you? You do, you do different variations. You, I know you do wrestling and I do it bad. Yeah. 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 No, but you yeah. you know you you try your best. Yeah, yeah I try my best. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so like I say, um, I've been training hard, so I've got the phone call, and to be honest, last year when I was meant to box I was a little bit, mm, I don't know how this is going to go, but I, I ripped the guy's hand off when he offered to me this time, yep. you know, I'm, I've been, I'm in the gym, I'm having wars, so why not put it to test, I'm 42 years old, I'm going up there against a guy that's up in his 20s, right, in Liverpool, 900 people, baying for my blood, I'm a winner already before I've even got in there. Excellent. Despite the fact I'm going to try and take it clean off um, in a nice way, a nice respect to you, Johnson. Like I say, I've got really, really good people around me. I've got so many friends in boxing. I've got my partner, Matt, I love to death. Wayne Morley, Ron, Terry Adaway, who's been training. Yeah. You know, who, who does my pads. Simon Gildare, Terry broke his hand a little while ago, so Simon Gildare has been uh, helping me out. Um, I've just got a lot of people. Got Andy Clegg's gym here today, Andy so that's Clegg's just shout out to Andy as well. Mate, listen quickly, I mean, you mentioned a few different reasons. Uh, you've had more comebacks than probably Roy Jones. Yeah. Um, but <coughs> come on, you seriously, mate, I know you're sort of playing you down a little bit, but you must be pretty confident, mate, going yeah, up. No, you're confident, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm really confident, yeah. I'm confident all the time I fight, but I just don't, I don't make it out as something that isn't, you know, it's not a world title fight, it's not going to be on telly. I just, you know me, I just, uh, it's just another fight. Two weeks after that, I'll, I'll fly to Benidorm. Yeah. Um, fighting in a ball ring um, against an Italian guy. Meant, meant to have freakish power or, or whatever. Um, in Benidorm, right? Benidorm, so. live on telly out there. How did that come about, Pete? How did you get called to go and fight in I just Spain? got a message of a guy that was selecting the, the, the English team, trying to get some good fighters from England, and he, he messaged me. Um, he said, am I still, still boxing? Uh, I said, it depends. And he, and he said, said about it, and I thought to myself, you know, why not? I can't, can't uh, pass an opportunity like that. Do you think? Do you know if they're gonna have a like a big crowd out there? I know you're, you know, yeah, 900 they, people got, this Saturday, but they got some guy, out there, <coughs> a professional fighter. I can't remember his name. To be honest, I'm only really concentrating on myself. Okay. Um, he's fighting in a big fight out there, and it's yeah, it's apparently it's, it's selling really fast. Um, I don't really give 
thinking, shit, I'm the promoter, so <laughs> I'm just going up there to have my fight, and, uh, okay. and that's it. Just going to move to Ron very quickly. Ron, how are you doing, mate? You all right? I'm good, thank you. Good, good. Ron, you've been you've been involved in the fight game for a long time. How did you get How did you get involved in it? Well, back in the late seventies and the early eighties, I was on the circuit in South London. Yeah. Unlicensed. We called it boot boxing then. And um, I've always been a fitness fanatic. Had gyms, done triathlons, um, marathons, all crazy stuff. Sort of horses. Yeah. I'm genuinely, my genuine love is boxing, any, any form of fighting. And I, I love guys that like to fight. Um, my experience is most guys that get in the ring have got screw loose, whether it be MMA, whether it be booth boxing, unlicensed, sure. they've all got screw loose. But they're all dedicated to the sport, Absolutely. those that do well. And um, I just enjoy training people. And my experience, I pass on. Right, you're looking absolutely brilliant obviously as you said you you know you've always been a fitness fanatic yes. so from your point of view um you're now training pete um i'm, part, I'm part of a team that trains pete yeah okay right. perfect perfect what do you see what do you see what, what do you think this guy does uh, really well and and how I, do you think i, knew, gonna I knew of pete for a few years prior to meeting him and, and he come up and introduced me to, himself to me in the gym hmm. and the minute i laid eyes on him we, we connected and uh, that was just over a year ago and um, I saw something in him that, that I recognised, and there's, there's a depth to Pete. You sure. know, he's a really deep person and totally dedicated in what he does, yeah. and that's a rarity. Yeah. And everything he does, he puts 100 percent in. So I'll give him some of my time. And now we try him once or twice a week. He's a bit lazy in, in his fitness and his cardio. He don't like doing it because he, he knows he's good. He, he can box, he can fight, he can throw a punch. But I've got him up to a level now where he's it, 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 unbelievable. He's okay. fit. So how do you think Saturday's going to go for you guys? Are you, are you going to travel up to Liverpool? Um, I've offered to go with him, but he, 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 I will or I won't. He, 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 he offered to come to uh, Malta with me once on, a, on the day before. Uh, no, I don't want to put him out. I'll be, I'll be going up there with uh, Terry. Uh, I know if anything went wrong. I know if he needs me. I know if he needs me. But as, as for that fight, I feel sorry for the guy because I think Pete's going to hurt him. Pete's going to Seriously, do yeah. it. He, 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 he really is ready. How do you Focused. So camp's gone really well for you guys then? Yeah, I think so. Okay. I think so. All right. Moving uh, on to Matt Sims. Matt, all right, buddy? Good to see you again. Thank you. Uh, shout out to your gym as well, your neat gym. Um, Matt, when I first met you, probably about over a year ago, you weren't fighting then. You was training. What's changed since then, mate? Um, because you've had a few fights now, haven't you? Yeah, I think to be honest with you, it's just that I am around a good bunch of people. Um, I'm always with Pete. We've been working on a lot of things, uh, promotions, key promotions. Yeah. Um, which our next show is November 18th. Okay. Um, just going to ask you that. But yeah. Cool. So uh, you know, and I think what the hardest thing is for me really is that I have a very big team of fighters. So um, I, I personally believe that when I'm when I'm training my team, I have to come second. Um, opportunities just come around and uh, I boxed down in Dover in December um, that was that went well uh, nice tall rangy guy uh, everything went to plan um, my next one is in Grays in Essex um, next Saturday right it's next Saturday okay it's 19th uh, it's for an English pro K1 title so stepping away from the boxing um, we're doing K1 on this next one. Okay. Um, so, what's the difference? What, why would I do boxing? Why would I do K1? Look, I'll be honest with you. I can box. I can kickbox. I can do K1. It doesn't really make any difference to me. As long as I'm standing up, I pretty much can do whatever. Just got to fight. Yeah. Yeah, I can fight. So it's no problem. You know. Um, again, I have good sparring partners. You know, I've got a whole team of people in my gym to spar with. Good, good guys. Got Pete. Pete's been helping me with a lot of pads this lately. You know. Yeah. Keeping my boxing up to scratch. Um, We've got Dan Woodgate, he's a very top top pro, um, pro trainer, you know, so he's, he's back in the scene, he's back on the game, um, he put his input back into me as well, and uh, Damon Lake, you know, helping me out with the K1 stuff, and I've got my whole team, Jacob's life, Tanika, Jack, I've got, I've got a good team, you know, helping me get back into the kicking. The only probably, probably, probably downside is that I've not kicked since 2012. 
Okay. Um, so it's quite a few years since I've been using my legs again. Um, but you're getting there. Doesn't mean I, I don't know how to use them. Do you know yeah. What I mean? So it's just uh, yeah. So you you prefer obviously the uh, the stand up, you know the, the yeah. Fight, I've, I've tried the striking MMA stuff. Um, it's a good game. I just don't like rolling around with sweaty men. Each to their own. But um, yeah, it's hard. MMA is hard. No, no doubt about it. But it, it, it's an individual thing. Actually. Sure. Yeah, so uh, I think it's whatever you sort of um, learn and take to. So, uh, but yeah, I've, I've got a good opportunity fighting for a Pro K1 title, ISKA title, and that. So it's a, a world, world recognised title. It's not just. Um, Mickey Mouse, Mickey Mouse made that title. This is a recognised world, world, world title. Set. Yeah, well, it's, it's a good title, you know. So, yeah. um, mate, you're obviously a very fit guy just by looking at you, um, and you, and as you said, you're you're a trainer as well. So, how do you keep yourself motivated as as a fighter and as a trainer? I mean, you've obviously got a good bunch I of guys good, around good you as well. I have good people around me. I have good people around me. So even even though like I might not be training with them, we still have lots of conversations. We're still talking, you know. And, and, and all the rest of them, yeah, I'm with them. And he comes from good stock. Yeah. Well, I, just like this, I used to train his dad. Yeah. He, he comes from that sort of background. He's yeah, so you come from a fighting family, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, and I'm with people every day, you know, like we're best of friends, so yeah. you know, it's like... And as you say, it doesn't it does now necessarily have to be the physical training, just the motivational chats. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you yeah, know, that, that, when, when you're talking about, story, yeah, yeah and, and you're watching sparring, you're watching yeah. fighters, you're watching this person do this, and, and how that person's developing. Yeah, I'm not getting any younger by, by any means, you know what I mean? So I don't know, you know, what, when I'm going to fight again. The beauty is with me is you, you never know when you're, I'm going to fight. Of course. So that's why people want to buy tickets. It's yeah. exciting. You know? yeah. What, what am I going to do? Yeah, I, I'm going to look for a big guy. What am I going to do? And you I give it what I'm going to do. So that, that, that's a good thing, you yeah. know? So that's why when I, when I, when I, when I fight, yeah, I sell tickets. You know, so Matt, let me ask you. Obviously, you're, you're, you've got a quite a, a well-rounded game. Yeah. What are you making of this uh, 26th of uh, August fight between Mayweather and McGregor? Listen, it's an interesting fight. Everyone writes everyone off. You know, the MMA against the boxing. Mm. Mayweather is, is the elite, obviously. Conor McGregor, just from a fighting perspective, yeah. stands a chance at, at, at fighting. Really. Yeah, it, do, do I think he's going to win? No, but at the end of the day, he's got a fighter's chance. Of course. He's got a fighter's chance. Of course. Right? He's got you know, use, yeah. He, he, he's been in many fights, you know, he, he can throw shots. I don't know if they'll be anywhere near as close as, yeah. you know. And I'm sure all three, three of you guys know because you're in the fighting game for a long time. And it's not the first time it's happened, the crossover, it's just two high, high, high profile guys coming together it's a money you know, fight. for the event. It's a money fight, it's isn't money. it? That's, money. that's what it is. Yeah. The best um, fight, the really fight that we want to really talk about is Canelo versus uh, Golovkin. Golovkin, yeah. If you could talk about any fight, I'd say talk about that fight. That fight is a good fight. Absolutely. You know, so. Mind you, on the same day as your fight, there's obviously um, uh, down in the lower divisions, uh, Terence Crawford is fighting in Dongo for the undisputed uh, World Light World Weight Championship, which hasn't happened for a while. So um, yeah, so there's some, some great fights happening in August. Guys, just before we wrap up, um, Ron, any last words as, as, a, as a trainer or you know, in, in any uh, way? Just, just my thoughts on the McGregor over the fight. I, I feel that any time you put two fighting men in the ring, yeah. anything can happen. Absolutely. Anything can happen. Yeah. That amount of money behind it, anything can happen. Yeah. I mean, if, if nothing else, I mean, people, like you said, Matt, people, people can write, write him off at their peril, but look, he's a, he's a two-weight world champion in his respective sport. Yeah. He's got youth, and he's got a meaty left hook as well, isn't he? He's got a meaty left as well, so anything can happen. He's right punch. Um, but listen, guys, thank you so much for today. Pete, don't look glum. Um, all the best for Sunday and the 26th of August. Friday. Get out. Is it Friday? Well, yeah. Sorry, yeah. you're making well, me forget now. It's still Sorry. Friday. It's still Friday. <laughs> uh, listen, all the best for Friday up in Liverpool. I know you do wonders. And obviously 26th of August out in Benidorm. Thank Ron, you. thank you so much. Matt, all the best for 19th of August. Guys, just don't forget, November 18th, Deadly Showground, Kent's biggest show. You want to get on it? Two world titles. We've got two world titles. Yeah. Speak to us guys. 
We'll Guys, very quickly, is there anything on the King's side, uh, sorry, on the UK BC side as well? Um, first of October, that's nearly sold out now anyway. Um, so over Facebook. I don't really need to. But where's it going to be, Pete? I said the gallery. It's in a brand new gallery. They just referred to it. Spent yeah, thousands and thousands of pounds. I don't really need to big that. I think that's uh, that's good venue. Yeah. And there's some incredible fights on that. I think fight that's now. all wrapped up now already. So like I say, there's no point in me hyping it up. It's um, something sort of a done deal now. I'm actually, I'm actually pulled, pulling tickets back off of fighters at the moment. Because okay. I think it's over capacity. I don't want to jinx myself to touch wood wrong way. Touch it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's it. But the big one Perfect. is November the 18th. Which is Deadly. King's promotion at Deadly Showground, which holds 2,500 people. Yep. And we plan on selling that out as well, like we always do. Yep. But we've already got two proper world titles confirmed um, in K1 and kickboxing. Plus, uh, there'll be white collar boxing, MMA, uh, kickboxing, and my Muay Thai K1. Um, yeah. So that's that's going to be the one. We'll definitely have a catch up before then. Look, guys, all the best for your fights. As promoters, you do a wonderful job. So, somewhere after August, we'll have another catch up as well. Brilliant. All yeah, the best, guys. You. Take care. Thank Cheers. You.